Inmates, how's life behind bars? Not these bars, these bars. Very exciting day today. Now, as a lot of you will know from a previous video, you know that I've got a Jekyll and Hyde exhaust on the back of my GS Adventure. What we've done a lot of for customers, they've come along and they've had the Jekyll and Hyde exhaust fitted, but we've also put on a Krapovich decatted headers. We've got titanium and stainless steel. We've done videos and we've put them on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and people have commented and they've seen the results of what that is because it just makes it just like what I've got on my bike, but just a bit more aggressive. But today I've got my bike behind me and I've got a customer's bike behind me who has had the decatted header. So this one has got the original factory catted header with a Jekyll and Hyde can. And this one has got the decatted header in stainless steel with a Jekyll and Hyde can. Now, it's incredibly hard to capture the true sound that only the human ear can pick up from these exhausts, but we're gonna be using the same microphone on both. So I'm gonna start with my one first. As we know, standard factory header pipe with a catalytic converter installed with a Jekyll and Hyde, and I'm using a microphone just here. So we're gonna use that microphone. It's gonna stay on my shirt. I'm gonna do my bike first, rev it, and then I'm gonna stand in the same position with the other bike, so the microphone's still facing the kind of same direction, so we can hear the comparison using the same equipment in the same kind of way, if that makes sense. And afterwards, we're gonna look at the ammo guard as well. I could have probably made two videos out of this, but let's just get it all in one go. So I've got an ammo guard on both bikes. One's got the mirrored lens and one has got the non-mirrored lens, so you can't tell it's even an aftermarket headlight guard on there. And we're gonna test them both in the daylight, looking at it so you can see exactly the difference between both lights as you're looking at it. And then later on, I'm gonna come back out here. You're gonna see it in a few minutes of it in the darkness, shining a light up at the wall or something over here. So you're gonna see the difference there. Okay, let's get on with it. Okay, so hopefully you can hear my voice over the exhaust. I won't speak for too much. So the bike is now warmed up and it's just idling over with the valve closed. So this is actually, from our experience of fitting many of these exhausts for our customers, this is actually quieter than stock, all right? So we can go through those villages and not make any noise at all. So I'm just gonna rev this now. So I'm taking up to about 5,000 revs. Okay, and now I'm gonna press the button. You should have heard that got a lot deeper now. And then back to normal. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to do a double press on the button and what this is going to do is put it in dynamic mode so it opens the valve halfway. And press the button again to shut the valve. Okay, let's turn that one off. Okay, let's do the one with the decatted header. So we're just letting it warm up. There you go, so the revs are now dropped down, so it's ready to go. Here we go, so the valve is closed. Okay, now I'm gonna open the valve. Close the valve. And now a double tap. This is dynamic mode. And tap it again. And that has now closed the valve. 
back to normal. So one more time with it fully open. There you go. So, what do you think? Which is louder? Obviously, we know which one's louder, but which one do you prefer the sound of? Now, for me personally, because I'm riding my own bike quite frequently, I wear earplugs, I always ride it with the valve open. I never feel the need to shut that valve down to be quieter. Maybe that's causing offense to some people in villages when I'm riding through. I, I'm not too sure, I haven't had people complain. Uh, the other one is certainly more sporty and it does make me think, do I want to spend the extra money and take out the factory headers on my pipe and put on the decanted headers? It sounds pretty fruity. Please leave a comment down below and tell me what you think. Now, let's move on to the ammo guard, showing you the differences between the mirrored lens and the non-mirrored lens. Now, don't forget, if you want to, you can put an amber lens in behind it to highlight the X on the newer bikes or the G light on the older bikes. So when you're ordering it, make sure you pick the right one for your bike. So if you've got an older bike, older than 2021, and it's got the, like the C shape, like the horseshoe DRL shape in there, that is the G light. If you have a 2021 bike with the adaptive headlight and you see that X shape, like you can see on these two bikes here, the X, well then you choose the X light. The bike to the, my left, your right, that's actually having a selective yellow lens fitted because as you can see, he's got the selective yellow lenses fitted on his DM lights down low on his bike. That's what the customer asked for. So when he picks his bike up at the end of this week, he will be getting the selective yellow X on his bike. So I'll try and get that, that footage on this video if I remember to get my camera out in time. But for this video and this demonstration alone, I just want you to see how much light these bikes throw out down the road based on the mirror or the non-mirror. So let's start off by showing you daytime footage of what the light looks like to look at from a distance and close up with the mirror or without the mirror with no colored filter at all. Okay, so this is the mirror. This is the non-mirror. Okay, we've been blinded by the lights, aren't we? Right, I'm just gonna go and turn off his lights. Okay, I've literally just turned off the, the lights on the, the bike on the right. So the bike on the right is the one without the mirror. Now, as I'm looking at them, the naked eye, I have to admit the one on the right is brighter. Now on camera, it's coming through as a bit blurry. That's because it is so much brighter. Whereas one on the left, you can look at it a lot easier. So I can see it is, it is faded slightly compared to one on the right. So bear that in mind, if you do have a mirrored lens, it does bring it down a little bit. So I'm gonna go back inside, have my dinner, come out later when it's dark and, and turn the bikes around and shine it on that same wall and see which one gives off the brightest beam. See you in a bit. Okay, before I do that, what I'm going to do is trick the bike into thinking that it's dark right now so you can see what it looks like looking at the lamp. So I'm pushing out a cloth over the photo cell which will bring the main headlight on at the front. The same goes for my bike here. Got a cloth over it. And let's see what that looks like. So my bike on the left, um, I've got a, a nighttime setting where my lower D3 spots come on. And the bike on the right, I've turned the lights off so we're not confused with things going on. They've both got visor lights on them. So you can see that they are giving off the same light. Not too much difference. With the naked eye as I'm looking at it, let me just come in front of the camera. As I'm looking at it, of course, this is slightly brighter than this one here. Of course, uh, for sure, side by side, you can just about work out the differences, but um, the bike on its own, you really wouldn't know. Um, the mirror lens just looks cool. Now, if, for those of you who are screaming at your screen saying the mirror is not road legal, neither of these headlight guards are road legal, okay? There is no headlight guard on this planet that is road legal. If you put anything in front of your headlight, it's not road legal. It's for off-road use only. But that doesn't stop a lot of us using it. The beauty of the ammo guard is, it's very hard to detect. Apart from my logo on the top, it's very hard to detect that that is a headlight guard to the untrained eye, okay? Right, so we're out here at night time. I don't know what time it is, it's about 10 o'clock 10 at night. What we're gonna do, I've got the two bikes behind me, I'll show you those in a second. Uh, and you'll see the tripod. Actually, let, let's, let's do it now. If we show you here, there's a tripod. 
I've got my bike here. This is the one with the mirrored screen. And I've got the other bike here, the customer's bike, which he, he's picking up, come on focus, which he's picking up on Friday. And that's there and that hasn't got the mirrored screen. It's just got the clear lens on there. Now what I've done, you, you, you probably struggle to see it, but I've, I've put rags over the visor turn signals just so we can diminish all light apart from the actual headlights. Let me just turn this on now so you can see it. Right, so there it is. So and that's the main headlight there. So the emblem lights, they're on, but they're not gonna be throwing light down the road. And there's the visor lights there. So from the front, you can see, I've just got rags over them. And I've got some rags over the bottom fogs as well, just so there's no extra light being emitted from them. So let's put this on. And I've done the same with this one here as well. So that, that's the mirror. You can just about see my reflection in there. That's the mirror. We haven't turned that on yet. Let's do the test on this one first. Okay, so I'm gonna turn the bike on with the clear lens. There we are. So that's the main headlight that's now come on. And that is the light coming from the bike. I've got the camera right next to it. And that is as much light that's shining from the headlight. Okay, so let's now turn that off. And now we're gonna turn on the mirrored one right next to it. I'm not even gonna move anything. So we're gonna turn this off. That's now turned off and I'm gonna turn on the mirrored. Get ready, here we go. That is the mirrored lens doing its thing. Okay, I've got everything covered up. None of my Denali lights are coming on at all with the full beam. So here we go. That is with the mirrored lens. Full beam, dipped. Full beam, dipped. Let's turn that off. And with the clear lens, there we are. There's the main dipped light. Now let's do full beam. Dipped, full beam, dipped. I must admit from where I'm looking, the full beam is more powerful. So that mirrored lens is, is actually making quite a significant difference with using the factory light. And now I'm gonna turn on the, the extra lights the customers had fitted. So if I hold down the TSC for three seconds, one, two, three. There we go, there's his driving lights. And now I'm gonna turn on the other lights. One, two, three. Yeah, it's got more light. And now I'm gonna to go to full beam. And that's what the customer's got now. That's a really good driving light. It, it shines up right down the road. In comparison with the standard factory headlight, we've, we've now got that. Pretty awesome, isn't it? Let's turn that off. And the mirrored lens, to turn that back on. And we're going to turn on my D3s, which are one, two, three. There's my D3s. I'm going to turn on my D7s. Bring those on. And full beam, there's my D7s. So driving light. I actually have my D7s off for driving. Uh, but my D3s are on. And there's my full beam for D7s. Okay, there we go. Okay, so what did you think? I haven't actually seen the results yet because I'm recording this bit right now before I actually film this evening. <laughs> so I don't know if that mirror is gonna make any difference at all. Technically, it should make a difference, but I don't think it's gonna be a huge difference. A lot of customers who are fitting the Denali lights to the front of their bikes and the visor lights, by the way. The visor lights throw out a lot of light. I was told by one gentleman here as a comment on one of my last videos that the visor lights are not a DRL, they are a proper driving light. Um, I'm not gonna say I stand corrected, it is both. So if we wire this up through an easy can, we can have that as a DRL. 
and so you can actually get rid of the driving light side of it. But why would you? They are actually fantastic driving lights. They actually light up the road right in front of you, so they are a good driving light as well. But if you wire them up through an easy cam, which I actually don't feel there's any need to, you can actually run it as a DRL as well. If I've still got your attention, please note, the Ammo Guard is not going to be ready to ship until the end of May. Like right now, I'm filming this on the 26th of April, and the latest information I heard from the people manufacturing that light, they're still looking at having everything ready in the last week of May. In that last week of May, we have got to start preparing all those ammos and that takes time. I can tell you now, we've sold over 1,000 ammo guards globally. So we have a lot of preparing to do, plus running the business at the same time, but we are prioritizing it. The same goes for the powder coated bark busters. If you know about our powder coated bark busters, they are very popular too. The first order was more than overwhelming, which meant the subsequent order that we placed with the manufacturer was a lot bigger than we anticipated, which obviously causes time restrictions on getting the new powder coated bark busters ready that like the subsequent order we already have a second third subsequent order going into bark busters already because we're we're selling out of the stuff that we've already back ordered as well as i say at the end of every single video and on that note stay safe behind bars not these bars these bars I'll see you in the next video